Okay, so the last video out of chapter two is going to deal with measure of relative standing. So what I want to start with is just a small little picture. So let's just say we have this number line here. We have X bar in the middle and we have these dots. Once again, it's another little dot plot. Okay. Nothing too crazy here. All right. And let's say I was concerned with not the standard deviation, because remember, the standard deviation gives me uh, the dis the average distance of all of these uh, data values away from the mean. What if I was concerned with just this one right here? What if I wanted to know how far away is this data value away from the mean. And in order for us to calculate that, and we can, we need a z-score, okay? Now the z-score is very easy to find so let me, let, let's define it first, okay? So a z-score is the measured distance, let's say measured horizontal distance. away from the mean and to calculate this z equals x minus x bar all divided by s so it's a very easy calculation all right so let me show you an example here and i think it's a pretty good example so two students uh, are preparing for college entrance exams. All right, and the exams that the, the exams that uh, that they're preparing for are the ACT and the SAT exams, respectively. Okay? <clears throat> now, one student, so we'll just say student A. Student A takes the SAT. And scores the following. 1440 out of 1600. Student B takes the ACT and student B scores 31 out of 36. And this is a very simple question. Which student has performed better on the exam? So I know in the past you've heard the phrase, you cannot compare apples and oranges. Well. I hate to say it, but maybe that person that said that didn't take a stats course. <laughs> because if you can standardize it, then what you can do is say, okay, well, yeah, I can compare these two things. Now, in order for us to compare, though, you've got to have some information. First, we got to know what student A and student B did. Okay? And, um, and we, we, we have that information right here. Okay? We also need to know...
what are the mean and standard deviations for the two tests above. Okay, so we gotta know this. This is really important here. Now to find this, you can easily just go on the internet and find this information out. You can find out what is the average uh, SAT score and what's its standard deviation, what is the average ACT score and what's its deviation, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down. Just gonna zoom out here a little bit. So here are the stats for the SAT slash ACT. So the test X bar score in the standard deviation. So for the SAT, the average score is 1002 with a standard deviation of 168. For the ACT, the average score is a 21 with a deviation of 5.2. So what we're really asking here is this, okay? If I were to take a number line and put right in the middle, now this is gonna represent the SAT. If I were to put 1002, now we know for our students, student A, they scored 1440. So 1440 is all the way over there to the right. It's definitely larger than 1002. And for the ACT, we know the average was 21. And student B, sorry, I have to scroll up a little bit here. Ah, uh, 31, okay. So we know student B scored a 31, which is definitely larger than 21. The question becomes, and I'm gonna highlight it, which one of these two distances is more extreme? Because whichever distance is more extreme is going to be the student that performed better. So to do this, let's just go ahead and calculate a Z score. Oops, sorry. So what I'm going to do is the Z-score. For the SAT. So that's going to equal X minus X bar over S. So our Z-score for student A is going to equal the student score, 1440, minus the mean, 1002, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 168. And if I round this to two decimal places, that gives me 2.61. So now I'm going to do the z-score for the ACT, which, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to rewrite the formula here. This is going to equal 31 minus 21 all over 5.2. And when you calculate this, you get 1.92. So, because student A has a higher z-score, it's further to the right. I mean, let me make that note here. This student performed better. And that is how we start to compare apples and oranges together. Okay? <clears throat> That's what a z-score does for us. So now what I want to go go over is we're going to talk about percentiles and quartiles. Now we've all heard of these words before. 
percentiles, quartiles, stuff like that. And what percentiles and quartiles do is it takes a set of data and separates them or separates the data into 100 equal parts. So all data is different. Um, somebody can collect 50 data values. Somebody else can collect 500,000 data values. What percentiles and quartiles do is it, it, it'll tell us, okay, here's the first percentile. Here's the second. Here are the values in the third percentile and so forth. Quartiles are just very special percentiles. So I'm going to give some notation first. P25 means the 25th percentile. Okay. <clears throat> now what that does is, is if I were to separate my date, my data into four equal portions, P25 would separate the bottom 25% of my data from the top 75%. So it separates the bottom 25 from the top 75. Now, P25 also has a different name. It's called Q1 or quartile one, okay? So now in a different color here, we'll use, uh, we'll use this one. P50, separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. Now, P50 has two special names. The first one is going to be Q2, and this is also the median, okay? And then the last one, we'll use a different color. I'm going to find green. I like green. <clears throat> is P75. It has a special name. Another name is Q3 or quartile 3. And this will separate the bottom 75% from the top 25%. So, for example, <clears throat> if uh, if you scored in the 90th percentile, so let me let me write this down. So, example, if you scored in the 90th percentile, let me write it as P90, then this implies. that you scored better than 90% of your classmates. Only 10% did better than you. Now, <clears throat> do not automatically think that because you scored in the 90 percentile that you have a passing grade. What I mean by that is this. You could have a situation where everyone fails the exam. However, since you got the highest failing grade or one of the highest failing grades, you scored better than 90% of your uh, of your classmates. That doesn't mean you scored well. So, let me write let me write like a little star here. Scoring in the uh 90th percentile does not mean 
you did something great. Okay? It just means that you did better than 90% of the people that you took this test with. Okay? Sometimes we confuse 90 percentile with uh, like a 90% on the test, which is obviously an 8. That's not the case. Okay? So make sure you understand the difference between that. All right? Um, a lot of the times when you take exams or you're measuring or, or maybe maybe you have like a niece, nephew, or um, a child, and, and somebody says, oh, you're, um, your child is in the 90, 90th percentile in height. Well, all that means is that your child, according to their age, is taller than 90% of the other kids of that age. 10% is taller. That doesn't mean that, you know, your kid is this, like, gigantic child. Although, you, you could have a very tall child. Um, For example, my, my youngest brother is six foot nine. He's enormous. So, when you look at his height compared to everybody else's height, he's actually in the 99th percentile of height. He is taller than 99% of the population. Only 1% of the population is taller than him, which is staggering when you really think about it. Now, there is one more thing I want to go over before I show you how to find percentiles and everything like that. And I'm going to scroll back up here a little bit. And I'm going to highlight two very important numbers. I'm going to, hi I'm going to highlight them in blue. And that's Q3 and Q1. So, when you take Q3 and subtract Q1 from it, we call that the enter... quartile range. All right, another way to abbreviate the, abbreviate that is just IQR. And all that range tells us is here is the middle of the data. That's it. Here's you know, the values that separate the bottom 20 uh, the bottom 25 and the top 25 from everyone else. We just want the IQR So let's go ahead and let's kind of pull this all together, okay? So to find percentiles, that is going to equal the number of values less than x divided by the total number of values and then we're just going to multiply that number times 100 okay if we wanted to find the location of a given percentile so this is different the first is to find a percentile. The second is going to be to find the location of a given percentile. We use what we call the location formula. And it's very simple. The location is going to equal K divided by 100 times N. Now, K is the percentile that you want. So if you wanted the 50th percentile, you would put 50 in for K. If you wanted the 99th percentile, you would put 99 in for K. All right, so let me show you um, just how this works with some data that I've collected. All right, so All right, so let me make sure. Let me count uh the numbers I have are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. All right, so I have 12 data values here, okay? So if I wanted to find 
P of, let's say, 25, okay, then I would use my percentile formula. So let me write this, the percentile of 25 is going to equal Sorry, sorry, sorry. Using the wrong formula. <laughs> Using the wrong formula. If I wanted to find a 25th percentile, what I'm really asking for is I need the location of the 25th percentile. Sorry about that. So L is going to equal 25 over 100 times the number of data values I have, which is 12. So this is going to be 0.25 times 12. Or another way you can look at this is just what's 1 fourth of 12, which is 3. So what I would do is I would start at the number 1. That's my first value. Here's my second value. Here's my third value. So the value 3 is the 25th percentile. Another way I could have said this was, it's also Q1, okay? Now, on the flip side, let me erase some of this stuff here. I can ask this question. 10 is what percentile? Okay? So, this is the percentile uh, formula. So percentile of 10. Is equal to the number of values less than 10. So I'm just going to abbreviate some stuff here. Number of values. Less than 10 divided by the total number of values. Well, I have 12 total values. And then I multiply this times 100. So... I'm going to circle my 10, and I'm going to count how many values are less than that. So I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to be 8 divided by 12 times 100. So I'm just going to cheat and use my calculator. 8 divided by 12 times 100. And I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. So the percentile of 10 is the 67th percentile. So P67. And that's how we find either lo the location of a percentile or what value represents this percentile. Okay? Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is taking all the data that we've collected and organizing it into what we call box plots. So a box plot or another name for it is a box and whisker plot has this shape look that looks something like this and maybe we've all seen this before. Okay? And each whisker and each uh, end of the box even the middle they all have special names. So the first is this is going to be our minimum value. And the far right-hand side is going to be our maximum value. Okay? Second, the far left side of the box is Q1. The far right side of the box is Q3. And this line in the middle of the box is Q2. And when you combine all of these values together, we call this the 5 number summary okay and a five number summary will give us our box plot now notice i want to show you something here which is inside the box q1 q2 and q3 notice that i drew this deliberately my q2 is closer to q1 than it is to q3 and that's because q2 is going to be our median all right, we should know that. And also, this gives us an idea of the shape of the data. 
Q2 will not necessarily be directly in the middle. It, it can be really close to Q1 or it can be really close to uh, Q3. It's all dependent on the data that you've collected, okay? So what I would like to do is go through and show you how do we actually calculate the five number summary. To do this, we're just gonna use a very simple example here. So I'm gonna pause the video, write, write out the sample uh, the question, and then I'll unpause it so you can actually see it. I don't wanna waste too much time. All right, so we have a small little question here. The following measurements are the weight in pounds of small dogs. We have 25, 22, 26, 23 pounds respectively. You can see all the numbers. Our goal, let's construct a box plot. Okay, so um, in order to do this, we need the five number summary. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through on how to do this. So step one, let's calculate. Come on, erase. Why are you not erasing? <laughs> it's driving me crazy. There we go. Step one. Calculate Q1, Q2, Q3, and the IQR. All right, so we know Q1 is really... P25, so we can go ahead and, and use our formula for that. We know Q2 is really the 50th percentile or the median. And then Q3 is the 75th percentile. So what we need to do with our data is sort it. So in order for us to find Q1, Q2, and Q3, we need to sort our data first. So I'm gonna go ahead underneath here and just sort it. So the, uh, let's see, we got 12, 18, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 27, and 28. Okay, so there's our sorted data. Uh, if you count, we have 11 total data. So what we're concerned with now is how do we find or what number is the 20th, 20th percentile? So that's location. So L is gonna equal 25 over 100 times 11. So 0.25 times 11 is 2.75. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna round this up to three. So what number is Q1? Well, I'm gonna start right here at 12. That's my first data value. And I'm gonna include that as number one, two, three. So right here, the value number 22 is gonna be Q1. So what I'm gonna do is just scroll up here a little bit. So right here is Q1. And I'm going to erase the 25th percentile. You know what? Let me write this in red. I think red will make a lot more sense. And we'll be able to see it better. All right. So Q1 is 22. Now we're going to do the same thing for 25. I'm sorry, for the 50th percentile, which is Q2. So... 0.5 times 11 is going to be 5.5. So what we're going to do is just round that up to 6. So we're looking for our sixth value. So we know Q1 is 3. So this is going to be, I'm going to write the numbers underneath. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Did I miss one? Did I miss a value here? 12, 18, 22, 23, 24. Oh yeah, I did. There are two 25s. I'm sorry. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt us at all. Not gonna hurt us at all. Let me just finish. Let me rewrite this. Two 25s. 
Then we got a 26, a 26, a 27, and a 28. There we go. So back onto this. Location is going to be the six numbers. That's going to be right here. So there's Q2. Okay. And then Q3 is the 75th percentile. Over 100 times 11. So it's going to be 0 0.75 times 11. Which is 8.25. So what we're going to do is we're going to round this to 8 because it's actually closer to um, to 8 than it is the 9. So let's go ahead, count off 8 numbers. That's going to be right here. So there's our Q3 right there. Okay. Now, I've seen other people always round these numbers up. It, it It's really hard to kind of explain this because when you start using technology, Computers, they, they round differently. So you got to just be careful and just make sure you're just following directions. That's all. So Q3 is going to be 26. Okay. So, so far we have, of our five number summary, we have Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay. So what you can do is if you wanted to, you could start building your box a little bit. So here's Q1. We know that's 22. Here's Q3. We know that's 26. And then Q2 is actually going to be really, really close to 26. So it's gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate it here a little bit. I'm gonna put it closer to Q3 than it is to Q1, okay? So now the question becomes, What's my minimum value and what's my maximum value? So if step one was to find, I'm going to scroll back up here so you can see it. So if step one was to calculate Q1, Q2, Q3, and the IQR. Oh, I forgot to do the IQR. Sorry. We'll do it off to the right here. IQR equals 26 minus 22, which equals 4, because we're going to need that. Step two is going to be to find the max and min values. So step two are max slash min values. All right. And, and also, if you wanted to include this in outliers, if there are any. Okay. Now to find the max or min, it's going to look a little weird. So... We'll start off with the minimum first. So to find the min value, you have options. Option one, it's gonna be your minimum value. Option two is gonna be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. Now, whichever of these options is greater that will be your min value, okay? So, like I said, I know we're finding the minimum value, but you're looking for, of these two, which one is larger, which one's greater, and that will be your minimum value. So, for example, in our sorted data list, the smallest value we have is the number 12. So, option one is going to be 12, or... Option two is going to be Q1, which is 22 minus 1.5 times the IQR. Now, our IQR turned out to be four. So if we take 22 minus 1.5 times the IQR of four, that equals 16. <clears throat> According to the directions, we take the larger of the two values. So... 16 is going to be our min value, which means this number 12 right here that we calculated 
is actually an outlier. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's just highlight our minimum value. All right. Because we're going to need that in a second. Now let's go ahead and find our max value. Now our max value is just like the min value. It's a little weird. So you have two options. Option one, it's going to be the max value or option two is going to be Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. And for this, you're going to go ahead and you're going to choose the smaller of the two values. Okay, so whichever one's smaller. So our max value is 28 or uh, the other option would be Q3. Well, we found Q3 to be 26 plus 1.5 times 4, our IQR. So 26 plus 1.5 times 4 is going to be 32. And we want the smaller of these two values. So the smaller one is actually right here, option 1. Okay? So just to summarize, our min value is 12. I'm sorry. Sorry, I lied. Our min value is, well, which one was it again? 16? Now I'm confusing myself because I'm not looking at it. Yes, yeah, 16. So sorry about that. So our minimum value is 16. Q1 <clears throat> is going to be 22. Q2 is 25. Q3 is 26. And then our max is going to be 28. So if I were to draw my box plot here, I would go ahead and, I would go ahead and draw a box first. I would label Q1 with 22, Q3, 26. Now Q2 is closer to 26 than it is to 22. So I just exaggerate that a little bit. So now I'm going to do my max and min values. To the left is going to be my min. To the right is going to be my max at 28. And I also want you to notice the length of those, we call them whiskers. Notice that <clears throat> from Q1 to the min, that is basically a distance of six values. So that's going to be longer then the distance from Q3 to my max, which is only two values. So I drew that deliberately. Notice this is longer than the other side, okay? And then I have that one outlier, which was number 12. So I draw a little asterisk, and I just label that outlier with the number 12 above. And there's your box plot right there. Now, I did show you, or I did tell you, that I was going to show you how to do this using uh, salt. So, let me show you how to do that. So, <clears throat> I went ahead and typed in our values right here. Okay? So, here's just our X values. Um, I don't have to worry about sorting them or anything like that. Salt takes care of everything. But what I do have to show you is how do we actually solve this? Or, I'm sorry, how do we save this? So in the upper left-hand corner, I click on File. I click on Save As. It's very important you click on Save As. And then uh, I just saved it to my desktop. So I just clicked on this folder up here in the upper right-hand corner. And I clicked on Desktop. So I scrolled all the way up here. And I said, okay, I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I labeled it just my X example. That was my file name. Now, Save As Type. This is important. You're going to click on the down arrow, and you notice you have all these different options. The one that you want is highlighted, CSV, comma, delimited. 
That's the one you want. So all you got to do is just scroll down till you see it, click on it, and then click on save. Okay? And that's it. It's saved to my desktop. So now, when I go into salt, let me show you where, where, where to do that. Because I did do something for us. Very nice. Because I think I'm a nice guy. So, if you go to Blackboard... On the left-hand side, you're going to see Statistical Analysis Tool. All you have to do is click on it, and it takes you directly to SALT. Now you don't have to worry about going through your homework or anything like that. All right? So we got two choices for data set, existing or upload. We're going to upload. So I click on Upload, and it says, okay, upload your CSV. So I click on that, and it's going to ask, okay, well, where is it? Well, remember, we saved it to the desktop. So I just go down on the left-hand side underneath Quick Access, click on Desktop, and here's my X example right here. So I just go ahead and open it. It's going to say, select the variables. Well, we only have one variable, which was X. So I click on X, click on Select, and here it is right here, which is beautiful. So to create my box plot, it is literally as easy as just clicking on Charts and Graphs, Box Plot, and then we need to select the variable. Well, our variable was called X. And as soon as I click on X, here's your box plot. Now, they do their box plots, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they do their box plot left to right. Or, I'm sorry, I mean up and down, up and down. All right? But here's our box plot right here, 22, uh, 25, 26, which is our, excuse me, which is going to be our... Q1, Q2, and Q3. We have uh, our min at 16. Oh, wait, they have 18 here. I don't know. Maybe I typed in a number incorrectly. I probably did. So this should be 16 right here. I'm going to highlight it. That should be 16 right there. Uh, and then 28 is our max. And then this little dot down here is 12, which is kind of hard to see. Can I, well, let me zoom in. Probably not. <clears throat> nope. But that little dot right there is 12, and that's our... Um, that's going to be our outlier. And that's it for using salt. It's really simple. It's just a matter of you typing it, type, typing in the data correctly. So I hope this helped. Good luck with your homework. Good luck with the uh, quiz or test. I forget what it is this week. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to uh, email me. See you in the next video. Bye.